come down to your mats. Find yourself in a cross-legged position or any seated position if you want. An alternative, if sitting cross-legged bothers your knees or your hips, put a block or even two under you to elevate because it makes it easier in your knees and you can sit like so. Your option. I am going to sit cross-legged. And we'll probably start and end here. So, you know, having that handy can be helpful. And go ahead and just release. Hi, Kristen. Release and relax into the mat. Let your arms just rest. They can be palms down or palms up. It doesn't matter, but just try to relax any tension, any stress through your shoulders. And you can either close your eyes or you can just let your eyes kind of drop so you focus on a point kind of in front of you a little bit. And then just begin to focus on your breath, taking an inhale through the nose, pausing for a moment, and then a long exhale through the nose. You always want to work to your own breath, your own pace, but roughly we're looking at an inhale for a four count, holding it for a one or a two count, and exhaling for about a six count. So you don't need to count it, but just to give you an idea. And as you do this, allow this to bring relaxation and balance to your body. Letting go of stress and tension. Notice areas where you might be feeling any tension and try to breathe into that area and then as you exhale, let it go. And if there's thoughts or stresses, emotions in your mind that are causing distraction, just notice them accept them, honor them, and then see if you can let them go, at least for now. Release your head forward, dropping chin towards chest. So you're not rounding the rest of your back here. You're just letting your head drop forward. Taking a deep breath there, feeling a stretch in the back of your neck. See if you can continue the same breath pattern. Inhaling, gentle pausing, long exhale. And then just roll your head side to side, ear to ear. Making little half moon shapes. And when you get over to whatever side you're heading to, pause there with that ear dropped towards that shoulder. Continuing to inhale, pause, exhale. And then roll your head a few more times, ear to shoulder, ear to shoulder. And then the next time you head over to the opposite shoulder, pause there, stretching the opposite side of your neck. Inhaling, retaining, exhaling. And bring your head up to center. Inhale, extend the arms up, interlace your fingers, open your eyes and tilt your gaze upwards, giving yourself a stretch. And then just bend side to side, really slowly, over to one side, over to the other side. And you can kind of use the hands here that are interlaced, so you pull a little bit on that arm to even stretch yourself a little bit more each time. Keeping that same breath pattern. And working your way back to center, bringing the hands behind you, pressing them into the mat, 
pulling the shoulders back gently, lifting up towards the ceiling, opening your chest, your shoulders, your throat. Holding here for a breath cycle. And then the next time you exhale, releasing that back to center, releasing that out, bringing the soles of the feet together, sitting up tall, opening up through the hips, option as always to press down with your arms, option to flutter your legs, option to do neither of those things. Continuing to inhale, pause, long exhale. And folding forward, dropping your head. I've shown you this before where if you want, you can take a block, putting it on your feet, maybe even all the way up here for your head to have a place to land. Sometimes that's more comfortable. Sometimes not. You decide. Couple more breaths here, seeing if you can let go, opening through the hips, releasing the back, releasing the neck. And after your last long exhalation, go ahead and bring yourself back up. And once you get up, go ahead and open those legs out toes towards the ceiling, kneecaps towards the ceiling, sitting tall. We're going to combine some stretching with some abdominal work here. So it's working the sides, the waistline, the oblique, and also stretching. So we're going to lift up and over, bending to one side, and then up and over to the other side. So it's a little bit deeper of a lateral bend than we just did a moment ago, and you're needing to use your core, your abdominal muscles to lift you up through center. So try not to spring off that hand that's on the mat. It's there for support as you bend over, but avoid like pushing too hard off of it because then you're using your arms rather than your abdominal muscles. And this is roughly an inhale and then a long exhale as you stretch. So we're trying to keep a similar breath pattern, inhale. Long exhale to stretch. And make sure you finish on the opposite side from where you started, wherever you are. Go ahead and complete a full cycle, finishing on that last side before making your way up to center. And then from here, walking it forward. Again, option to put a block, a book, a pillow in front of you to rest your forearms on. It's not a tragedy if you round your back here and kind of drop your head forward, but what happens is we, we end up with a lot of compression in our low, our low back. Lots of people have low back pain. And so the idea here is to think of that same string that's always lifting you, lifting you, lifting you, fighting against gravity that's rooting you, and then hinging with that long spine forward. And that's going to create some space and stretching some length in your low back as opposed to just sort of dropping here, which doesn't, that just compresses the low back. So even if you only hinge forward, this is very hard in terms of flexibility. Most people don't have a lot of flexibility here. So even if it's just a teeny tilt forward, sometimes just getting to vertical is a challenge. If you're real tight through your hamstrings, you'll tend to sort of slouch back like here. So just getting lifted is going to feel like a lot. Hinging forward, hinging forward, hinging forward as much as you want. And just breathing into it. As always, not pushing too hard early in the practice with these static stretches. And then the next time you inhale, go ahead and walk yourself up. Bringing the legs closer together, we're going to do the Pilates spine stretch forward. So this one is a rounded spine. We're going to do both so you get the sensation. Part of what the reason we do both of them is I want you to get the, feel the difference between a rounded spine and elongated spine. They both serve their purpose. 
Plies need a lot of grounding. So shoulders down and back. See if you can tuck those shoulder blades down into their pockets. Arms are parallel. If you want to hold a block, you can. It sort of helps train your arms to stay high. It's a little bit of added weight. Shoulders down and back. Feet are flexed and legs are just a little distance apart. We're going to inhale. As you exhale, it's like you're reaching the block forward. Chin tucks towards chest and it's a round spine here. So imagine someone pulling that block forward and imagine someone else behind you pulling your hips back so you're creating a stretch really in your upper back and back to center. So it's an inhale, pause, long exhale. Inhale to sit, pause, long exhale. Inhale to sit. Pause, long, exhale, extend. Two more times. Inhale, exhale, reach. Inhale, exhale, reach. Inhale, exhale, just relax, release. If you're holding a block or anything, you can set it down, bring the feet a little closer together. And now yoga, Paschimottanasana, we keep an extended spine. So arms extend up, lifting without hunching the shoulders. Inhale, extend, exhale to hinge this time, reach with the arms. So now like someone's pulling your hands and pulling your hips. When you can't go any further, let the arms just drop where they are. And then if you want, you can grab hold of calves, ankles, toes to pull yourself forward, but your chest stays pretty lifted unless your abdomen and your ribs are all the way on the mat. The more you flex those feet, the more you get a stretch in your hamstring. If you've got tight hamstrings, be careful here. Don't overstretch. Inhaling, retaining, long exhale. And then the next time you exhale, just allow yourself to relax down into this. So your back rounds over, your head drops down. And take a few breaths there in your back body. And bringing yourself up to center. Opening the legs just a little bit again, about mat distance, another Pilates version of a stretch. A modification of the saw. So we're going to sit up nice and tall. Arms are going to be out straight from the shoulders. We're reaching opposite pinky to opposite or pinky finger to pinky toe with the same breath pattern. Flexing the feet. Inhale. As you exhale, twist towards one side. It doesn't matter which, which and stretch as you reach that pinky past your pinky toe. Inhale. You keep the back arm extended. I have a wall behind me. Exhale, stretch. Inhale to center, turning the ear towards the knee. Exhale to stretch. Inhale to center, exhale, front palm flips down, back palm flips up, back to center. Last round, make sure you finish on the opposite side from where you started. And come up through center. If you want, you can grab the block again. Otherwise, you can bring hands to heart center or you can keep arms extended if you want to work the shoulders and the arms a little bit more. I'm going to put my hands on the block and we're going to twist. So it's an inhale and twist to one side as you exhale. Inhale to center, twist to the opposite side. So same breath. Inhale for about four, hold it. Exhale to turn. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale to center, exhale to twist. And again, finishing on the opposite side from where you started. And work your way back to center. Release that down, come on to hands and knees. So that was all focused on hamstrings and back. The problem areas that are very much connected in terms of uh, back pain. 
bringing yourself to tabletop. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips, a few cow cats, really exaggerating. Inhale, pressing the pelvis down, chest lifts, long exhale, lift and arch up. Inhale, starting with the base of the spine, we get to the end, pause for that two beats, long exhale. Again, seeing if you can inhale for about a four count, retain that breath for a two count, exhale for a six count. Option to add arms and legs. So your option, opposite arm, opposite leg, or you can just do the arm or the leg. Continuing the spinal movement. So you tuck into a ball, everything comes in. You inhale, everything extends with that little arch in your back, but contracting your abs to support your spine. So you're not dropping, causing pain in that low back. Really arching up, exhaling, inhale, extending. And the next time you extend, go ahead and hold that extension and find neutral spine. So come out of the curved spine of your cow, push your heel away, reach your arm away, belly button in, gaze on the floor in front of you. Good. Place the hand down, bring the leg forward, plant it down, coming up onto a runner's lunge. Option here, if you're struggling to reach the floor, just bring blocks onto the mat beside your feet. They can be at any level. Checking to make sure your knee is over your ankles. Pushing that back heel away, trying to straighten the hamstring as much as possible. Holding for a breath. Next time you inhale, keep the left hand planted as you twist to the right, extending the right arm as you exhale. Next time you exhale, right hand finds the mat, pivot the back foot, opening up so it's essentially a side angle bend, and again, having that block there might help you feel more comfortable. Open up, rotate that shoulder towards the sky, Next time you exhale, hand finds the mat. Step that foot back to plank. Your option, if you want to stay in full plank, I'm going to demonstrate in modified plank. Hand stand or shoulder, belly button in, hips are lifted. We're going to work through three modified Chaturanga Dandasanas. So we're going to bend the elbows as we lower down, exaggerating the chest, the chin, and then the hips swoop to the floor as you come up to a baby cobra. Press back onto your heels in child's pose. And then do it again, rising up into the modified plank. Exhale to lower down slowly with control. Inhale, press the hips into the mat, rise up to cobra. Long exhale, back into child's pose. Inhale, rising up. Hold for that count of two. Long exhale to release down. Inhale, lift up to cobra. Hold for two. Exhale, press back to child's pose. And then rise back up onto all fours. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Beginning again, cow cat. Just with the spine. See if you can really start, initiate the movement from the final vertebrae at the base of the spine and let it ripple all the way through your spine until you get to your head last. And then again, you can begin on the inhale or on the exhale, it doesn't matter. Adding either the opposite leg you did last time alone or also adding the arm. Tucking into a ball, pulling everything in on the exhale. Inhale, extending everything out. And then the next time you extend out, hold that position, 
push the heel away, extend the arm away. So even though you're reaching your arm away, don't reach out of the shoulder socket. Keep your shoulder pulled back. Flex your foot to create length through that leg. And then place that hand down, swing that foot forward, coming up into your runner's lunge. Again, option to grab blocks, checking that knee is over ankle. All you need to do is move the foot forward if it is not. Push through that back heel. Again, always trying to create length and flexibility in the hamstring. It's a really tight area. Keeping the right hand in the mat. Next time you exhale, go ahead and twist. Extend that left arm. Holding here for a couple of breath cycles. Next time you exhale, bring that left hand to the mat, pivoting the right foot. Option to put a block or something under your left hand as you open up, pulling that right shoulder back. Holding here for a couple of breaths. And then next time you exhale, that hand finds the mat, step the left foot back. Option to stay in full plank or to come down to modified plank with me. Same thing as we did before. Exhale, hug the ribs to the, or the elbows to the ribs, chest, chin to the floor, hips, press into the floor, rising up to cobra. Exhale, press back. If you're used to doing full chaturangas from your toes, come back to that modified plank. This is a time to work really slowly and build that strength. And if this is a challenge for you, that's fine too. You're practicing building that strength from your knees rather than doing it from your toes and dropping your hips or anything else. Exhaling. Inhale up to cobra. Last time, exhale back to child's pose and just hold child's pose. Release your head to the mat. Stretch the arms forward. If you've lost the breath, find that breath again. Inhaling. Retaining. Long exhale. And then go ahead and come back up, finding yourself on all fours again. Extend the right leg, pressing it back behind you, pushing it away. Bend the right knee. And now option to reach the left arm back and grab hold of that foot or ankle. If you can't reach, you can just keep the left hand in the mat and keep that right leg bent. If you want, you can lift that up a little bit. And releasing that down, swing the right leg forward, plant it. Rise up into a runner's lunge. We're going to come up with hands at heart center. Option to drop this back knee if you become unstable. Otherwise, we're going to twist here. The left elbow can come to the top of the thigh, or it can lock against the thigh as you twist. If you're falling over, bend the back knee, release it down to the mat. Or you can also put your left hand on a mat or on the block. Good. Rotate that back to center. Release the back knee onto the mat if it isn't there already. Hands behind the front knee as you press forward, opening the hip flexor. Option to extend the arms up, pulling the shoulders down and back as you open up through the chest. If you want this to be even deeper, you can bring the hands behind the back, pulling them away, opening the chest even more. Continuing to press forward, continuing to exhale and let go into it. And releasing that, hand square off the foot, press up and back, coming to plank, dropping to your modified plank, and this time lowering all the way down into the mat, releasing the legs behind you, keeping the toes together, the feet together, hands right next to the body, right under the shoulders. And with no pressure in the hands, we're just going to lift the chest up, so we're not using our hands, we're using our back. Exhale, release down. Inhale. Hold for that two count, long exhale to release. 
Inhale, make sure you're contracting the glutes, protect your spine, pull your shoulder blades together. Long exhale, release. Two more, lift up and hold and release. Last one, lift up. And this time, place the hands down now. And next time you inhale, see if you can press up a little bit more. Shoulders down, elbows by the side, and push up and back, coming to child's pose. Pausing here, rising up onto hands and knees. Extend the opposite leg, left leg, if you did right last time, pushing it away. Bend that left knee, foot towards the ceiling, reach the right hand back, grab hold of that foot, and lift it up giving yourself a stretch. Again, option to either grab something. If you can't reach your foot, you can hook a towel or a yoga strap around it, or you can just stretch towards it without actually grabbing it. That's fine too. And then swing that foot all the way forward, finding your runner's lunge, lifting up off that back foot, pressing up, hands to heart center, twisting, right elbow either comes to the top of the thigh and we stay here, or you go deeper, 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 twisting, looking up past the left shoulder. Again, if you're unstable, feeling free to drop the back knee. Or put the right hand on the mat beside the, le the left pinky toe. See if you can find that same breath. And then squaring off the foot with the hands. And stepping the left foot back. Finding your plank or your modified plank, lowering all the way down. This time we're going to extend the arms out in front of us. So head is hovering above the mat, lifting arms, lifting legs, squeezing glutes, and hold. If you want, you can pull those arms back, cactus position, and reach them back out and pulling them back and reaching out holding out lifting up a little bit higher and releasing down slide the hands back underneath the shoulders pushing up and back coming to child's pose again head down to the mat And then rising up to hands and knees. Option always to stay on all fours. Otherwise, we're going to come to downward facing dog, curling the toes under, pushing yourself up and back, down dog. Pressing palms into the mat, jogging through, bending one knee, bending the other knee, pressing both heels into the mat. Make sure you can nod your head. You're not holding tension. Make sure you can shake your head no. If you stay in all fours, do a couple cow cats. Otherwise, if you're in down dog, come out into a plank and push back up to your down dog. Inhale, hold for that count of two. Exhale to press back. Two more. Inhaling, flattening out into plank. Exhaling back to down dog. Last time, inhaling to plank, exhaling to down dog. And then everybody step your right foot all the way forward, rising up into a high lunge, hands at heart center, pushing that back heel away. Option to extend the arms up. Inhaling and exhaling. We're going to work our way to Exalted Warrior. So first we're going to twist to the right, extending right arm behind, left, left arm forward. Nice deep bend in this front knee, but we're staying lifted. So before when we were bent, we were down here, or we were twisted. Now we're twisted, but we're lifted. Release the right arm down, flip the left palm up, palm up and open up through the left side body. Taking a couple of breaths. This back hand is just loose, maybe on your thigh, but not pushing on anything. Good. And release this down. Stepping back to your plank, pressing up to your down dog or to your all fours. 
and left foot's going to step all the way forward, high lunge on this side, hands at heart center to start, press the heel away, deep bend in the knee, and then extending the arms up, growing tall, shoulders pulling down and away, twisting left arm extends back, right arm extends forward, releasing the left arm, right palm flips up, exalted warrior. And cartwheel those hands back down, stepping back to plank, pressing up, down dog, or all fours. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhale, right foot steps forward, pivot the back foot, pressing up into warrior one. Front knee bent, back foot planted. Uh, humble warrior, bringing the hands behind the back, clasping them together, pulling them away, opening the chest towards the ceiling and then folding over, releasing the arms overhead. Holding here for a couple of breaths. Using your next inhale to rise up, arms extend up overhead, pulling shoulders down into the back pockets, and then opening to Virabhadrasana two. Pulling the shoulder blades together, nice deep bend in this front knee, and now the hips are completely open, squaring, and our, only our head is turning and looking over that right front finger. Inhale, long exhale. Bringing the left hand behind the back, flip the right palm up, very similar to Exalted Warrior, Reverse Warrior. Inhale, long exhale, and coming back up, back to the front of the mat, looking at the front of the mat I should say, pivoting into a lunge, a power lunge, so you're hinging forward, arms are extending behind you, pushing the heel away, long spine. We're going to come to a balance pose. We're going to come to our uh, standing on our right foot and hugging our left knee into our chest. So when you're ready, launching up, knee comes to chest, holding onto the shin, and roll that ankle a couple of times. Notice if you're leaning backwards here. I have a tendency to do that if I'm not paying attention. So see if you can stand nice and upright. All right, we're going to transition this to optional dancer. So, you're going to take your left hand, grabbing your left ankle. Extend your right arm up, or if you're unstable, just put your hand on a wall. Bring that left uh, foot to your glute. So now your knees are once again side by side. You can stay right here, or if you want, you start to lift that back leg, that left leg up and away kicking your foot into your hand, reaching the right arm up and away. You don't think about hinging forward. There is a little hinge forward, but think more about lifting the back foot. Opening up, kicking into the hand. Good, rising back up to center. Bring the knee back into the chest and bring the hands to heart center. And then we're going to step back into our high lunge. So the left foot's going to step back, plant down, high lunge. Hands find the mat, step the right foot back, plank, coming to all fours or to your downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale. I'm just going to turn around so my back's not to you on this next side. And then we're going to step the left foot forward, rising up into your high lunge, hands at heart center. Warrior one, pivoting that back foot, arms extend up, keeping the hips in your warrior one square towards the front of the mat. Hands come behind the back, clasping together, opening up as you open your chest and throat towards the ceiling. And then the next time you inhale, bending down, or exhale, I should say, sorry, coming into your humble warrior. 
holding here for two or three breath cycles. On your next inhale, use the inhale to rise up, arms extend, and as you exhale, opening up, warrior two. Hips are open, gaze finds that same dristy point in front of you, looking out over the fingertips, pressing into the back pinky toe to protect. <sighs> Lifting nice and tall. And then reversing the warrior, right hand behind the back, left palm flips up. Opening up. We are on my phone now, so we won't lose internet, but we'll see if the lights flicker on and off still. I hear the generator going. And back to warrior two. Pivoting to our power lunge. So pivoting towards the top of the mat. Arms extend behind you, pushing that back heel away. Long chest. Stay nice and lifted. All right, we're going to launch into our balance pose. So bringing that right knee into the chest. Staying lifted. Nice and tall. Rolling that ankle a couple of times if you'd like. And then grabbing right hand on right foot or ankle. Taking the left hand, putting it on a wall, a chair, or extending it up. Bringing the glute, the knee to, uh, foot to the glute, knee to the knee. Pausing, find your balance. And now think about lifting that right leg away, pushing the right foot into the right hand, lifting, lifting, lifting. And then if a little tilt forward happens, that's okay. But it's not an active bend forward. Keeping your gaze in front on that focal point in front of you. Holding, holding, holding. I think the lights might cut off again in a second. No, no, maybe not. Good, and then coming back, knee to the chest, but bring the hands to the heart center so you're holding yourself up. And then step that foot back into your high lunge. Hands find the mat, stepping the left foot all the way back. And lowering the knees, lowering all the way down, chest, chin, and hips. Inhale, come into Sphinx. So the hands slide out, chest lifted. All good? Can you hear me? I see me, so that means I think I'm the one talking. Good. Legs extending behind, chest lifting, contracting the glutes to protect your back. And holding here for a couple of those breath cycles. And then releasing that, sliding the hands back, pushing up and back, this time curling the toes under to come to puppy pose. So reach the arms out in front of you. Push the hips back. So you're creating some traction in your spine. I actually like to sort of suction cup my hands. That's a totally optional thing to do. They can be palms flat. And then push the hips away. Let the head drop down. Feel a long stretch through your spine. And then walk your hands to one side. It doesn't matter which. Push the hips the opposite way. So if you walk your hands right, push your left hip away. You walk your hands left, push your right hip away. We're doing another version of a lateral bend. Take a couple of breath cycles here. Next time you inhale, walk the hands through center, go to the opposite side again, bending over. So think about just pushing that hip away just to create that side bend through the body. Hold here for a couple of breath cycles. And next time you inhale, come back to center. Now release the feet on the mat. Release down into child's pose and bring those arms beside you, palms up. Head melts into the mat and relax.
All right, so come out of your child's pose. Come onto your back. Bring your knees up to your chest and give yourself a hug. Bring your feet into the mat, press your palms into the mat. Tilt your hips, lifting up to shoulder bridge. And release that back down. Bring your right knee to your chest, push your left leg away, hug the right knee in once again, rolling the ankle if that feels good. And bring the left knee into the chest, pushing the right leg away, rolling the left ankle if that feels good. And then extend the left leg long, turn the palms up, Closing the eyes and reconnecting with that same breath we've been doing, inhaling for about four, holding, retaining that breath for about two, and then long exhale for about six. Trying to relax into it. Despite the technical challenges, giving yourself these last few moments, just watching the breath. Inhale for four, pause for two, exhale for six. And then breathing in, beginning to reawaken fingers and toes, rolling wrists and ankles, rolling your head from side to side. Give yourself a stretch, reaching your arms overhead, reaching your legs below. And then draw everything into a ball, hugging your knees into your chest, giving yourself a little rock from side to side. And roll to either side, resting your head on your shoulder or your arm, curling up for a moment there in the fetal position. And then push yourself up, finding yourself to that same seated position we were in earlier. It's 
spine tall and long. If you want to sit on a block, you can do so. Palms up or palms down. And reconnect to that breath. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Just continue breathing like that. Any thoughts that drift into your mind, exhale and let them go. And then the next time you inhale, open the mouth and let it go to exhale. And then next time you inhale, extend the arms up overhead. Palms pressed together. Exhale through the mouth again as you bring the hands to heart center. One last time, inhaling here. Opening the mouth and letting it go. Letting go of the breath, letting go of the practice. Taking a moment to pass a scan over your body. Om Shanti Om. Namaste.